Today on YPJ, we have another reaction video where I'm gonna be reacting to a really cool series that's called Middle Ground. And this particular one is Atheists and Christians Debate Truth and Belief. I've never watched it before. So you're seeing it live with me, my first reaction. But I like the theme because there's usually a reason why people become atheists and I'm gonna see what happens here. So here we go. Atheists and Christians were asked to engage with each other about their beliefs. I have had my doubts on the existence of a higher power. Yeah, I think any time I have gone through hardship, I've questioned not just what I believe, I question my life, I question my profession, I question my relationships, so. I, I think, you know, if you believe, whether it's Islam, Hindu, I think you have to doubt it. You can't just jump in there and be like, sign me up, I agree with everything, let's do this. That would be for you, but that's not for everybody that is a believer of any particular religion. Some people don't question anything. But in your view, by, by standing and saying, you know, I don't think there's any higher power, you, do, do you ever face any doubt of thinking maybe there is? Well, the definition of an atheist is someone who does not believe. It's not a declaration per se that there is no God. I am an atheist activist. I'm on the board of Atheists United here in Los wow. Angeles and on the steering committee for Americans uh, United for Separation of Church and State. Wow. All right, come on in. She's hardcore. I wonder what happened to her childhood. No offense, that sounds very judgmental. No, I've never had any doubt. Because I can see design everywhere. And you are not an atheist, you're an agnostic. Nope. You see, I'm an agnostic an no. believes. Don't tell me what I am. I am an atheist. <laughs> an atheist doesn't believe I'm in, an atheist, no. An atheist doesn't believe in the supernatural, no. period. An atheist an does not believe in An agnostic no, no, no. does believe an in the supernatural. That's the kind of guy I wouldn't want to be in the same room with. Well, I am telling you. That's the kind of Christian you don't want to be around. No offense to him. He's a good man. But it's just like you don't want to, this kind of environment where you're having, you're trying to have a really civil discussion to find out what does she believe. And he won't let her even communicate her own belief because he has everybody, you know, lined. He has everything figured out, which is one of the hardest things about how Christians come into conversations. And again, I don't want to put a judgment on him, but many times we come into conversations like this and everything's figured out. We figured it all out and everything goes into its slot. And so we don't have any open-mindedness. I'm not saying open-mindedness to atheism, but to the human being behind it. And I made a judgmental statement saying, I wonder what happened in her childhood. Forget my judgmental statement. But some, some things led her to believe what she believes or take on that lifestyle and even be on the board of an atheist group. So I think it's interesting because I would I would be curious for that. I wouldn't I wouldn't be trying to challenge her belief system because she believes wholeheartedly and teaches other people her beliefs, just like I believe wholeheartedly and teach other people my beliefs. It's not gonna help you to argue with me about out of my belief system, but we can learn from each other. And there's no learning in that man, which is really hard. I'm telling you what an atheist is. You're wrong. No. There you go. I am I am an atheist. You know, do you look, believe look, in the look, supernatural? Look, do not tell me. Do you believe what in witches? We don't I need to make anybody right or wrong. It's just answer the question, give her space to talk. Give her right. space to talk. Uh, it is an anti, anti love kind of mentality going into arguing about details that people aren't even asking questions about. And that's what we have to get out of. I am feeling frustrated right now. Uh, and everybody sits down. Oh. I'm, 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 I'm feeling frustrated because it's even amidst the fellow believers, like the things he says, I'm just like, yo, I don't even know. I don't want what he says to reflect what my faith is too, you know what I mean? I think like, it's sad um, that people are so determined to make other people wrong. And hmm. I grew up in a household with a conservative Jewish mother and a born again Christian father. And I was in an abusive marriage and my father yelled at me that I was going to hell when I walked oh. out. I'm sorry. No. I don't believe in a God that would believe that. Yeah, that's not. It's not, and that is objectively, I don't care. That's in crazy. These conversations, like, you know, if we have people who are just trying to drive their point through and almost exactly. converting it, it kind of shuts down conversation. Exactly. I want to know what you believe and why, why you don't. Wow, she just was very vulnerable about her belief system and where it came from. And, and um, that would be really painful. And a lot of parents have made that decision or that mistake where it's like they're you know, teenage daughter gets pregnant or, or something happens like this where they're getting out of marriage. And so it's one of the tenets of the faith and the parents don't know how to have their emotional response or I'm angry, I'm frustrated. So they put Christianity on it and say, God's going to judge you versus saying, I'm really hurt. I'm really frustrated. I've, I've experienced that in our family a few times growing up in a, in, in a few major ways where I've just watched and went, is this what Christianity is? Like we, we add God to the conversation of our own pain and hurt 
and at his judgment or put shame on something that he's not even like, it's not a reflection of who he is. And look at how that father not knowing how to deal with, maybe not having emotional intelligence or spiritual intelligence to understand what he was feeling. And he puts the first response over her, which is now defined who God is to her is, you know, you're going to hell because you're getting a divorce out of an abusive relationship that he didn't understand. And so I think a lot of us as Christians, we failed uh, to represent God because we were afraid to represent our own emotions or we, or we just react with our religious cards. We just put this religious card down this and we don't allow our humanity sometimes to be expressed. I think you know, if, you're, if you're facing something with somebody towards you, um, we, we have a human response. And sometimes we want to spiritualize that or put God on, especially the prophetic. People do it all the time where they say, God told me before they've had time to really process. And then that turns into a division relationship or a complete breakage. So I think it was really interesting that she was vulnerable and shared. This is where this comes from for me is that God can't be loving if this is who he is. And she's right. The way her father responded was wrong fundamentally from that one liner that we heard. Yes, come on in. Again, we have the power to choose our response to things. So I choose not to feel hurt. I choose not to be misunderstood. I think there's safety in being heard and understood. Mm-hmm. You feel as if the whatever it is that you want to be understood about matters. I'm, I'm getting married in the next two months, and I'm, I'm learning Ooh. that <laughs> just, just loving is not the same as understanding. <laughs> See, and it takes energy and effort That's so to good. understand someone who's different. I think it's a know, great example. We're kind of as a society becoming lazy, so we're like, oh, you're different, I don't want to understand. I need people who are just it's saying. It's always been that way. Oh, yeah, it's always been that <laughs> Time. Yeah, there was obviously no conclusions. It's interesting, because I think that that conversation, you have to have people who are open-minded enough to be able to talk about some things. And some of the questions that they asked, you know, were good questions, but I think um, even throwing in some more questions in about, you know, how do you feel about the way you believe affecting people like who are opposite, like an atheist or a Christian or a Christian or an atheist, how do you feel about your belief system and how can you be more inclusive in connecting to someone who doesn't have the same belief system? Because I think that's our biggest issue is that, I mean, Jesus or Paul, they connected to everybody, whether they were believers or not. I mean, Jesus hung out with people. And, you know, the one guy comes to him and says, I want to be your disciple. And it's like, cool, do it. Just sell everything you have and give to the poor, you know? And he's like, I, I already give the poor. And he's like, no, do it all. And he wasn't being mean or belligerent. He was just saying, hey, here's the qualifiers. If you want to come follow me, this is what it looks like. But, I mean, this is after hanging out with them, you know, for this period of time. And I think, I think you know, he went to tax collector's houses and stuff, and he wasn't, he wasn't like the older man. And, I, again, I, I appreciate the older man. He didn't go in with a, his guns loaded with spiritual principles. He went in with love and relationship and connection. And I feel like that's what's missing from this equation is that you could tell the blonde girl was trying to be, as a Christian, she was trying to be more connected. The Asian guy was awesome. He was trying to be, um, he was just trying to be uh, thoughtful and kind and um, inclusive. And then you could see with um, the one girl, woman I said I would be friends with, that one atheist I said I'd be friends with, I, I just could see in her background, like she's very intelligent and she's very thoughtful and she cares. You could tell she really cares. And so those are the types of people, like the other two women who were on the atheist side of me, I felt like they, we didn't really get to hear enough from them. So I don't know what they were really like. And that's unfortunate because some people took too much space so they couldn't have space. And especially in this conversation, it's hard when you know what you believe, but you don't know how to relate to others in it. And that's where we have to get to. We have to know what we believe, but know how to relate to others and be inclusive and not fill the whole space with ourselves, but leave enough room for other people so that God can come in. And that's what I think this is an interesting conversation for me middle ground i don't know how i would have done how would you have done tell us in the comments how you would have done in this conversation with some of the same questions or what is one of the questions you wish they would have asked both groups of people i would love to hear that in the comments below